Hello everyone! So, you want to beat the Harvester on Nightmare Difficulty for the Golems of Ang Angarok uh, DLC. Uh, and I'm here to show you how to do it. Um, I've done it in a very specific way. There's plenty of, plenty of ways to do it, plenty of strategies to do it. You can go on the wiki, the Dragon Age wiki, and there'll be a very in-depth list of what the Golem does, what's, what's the fight like, what all the little mechanics do, and many different ways to set up your character. But I just want to show you how I personally did it. Now, I would highly suggest using a mage as your main character, uh, so you can start a new mage or import it from Awakening. I would say that uh, importing a character from Awakening actually gives you an advantage because you can bring in gear that is very good. You can even bring in gear for your other characters that you have in uh, the Golems DLC so that you can give them better equipment, which is very useful. And one of the things that I feel that is very beneficial from Awakening is importing very good armor runes that you can put on your armor and a lot of potions. That's This is why I have so many potions. I have about 50 uh, mana potions, lyrium potions in this case, and they're very, very useful for this fight and kind of mandatory, especially for the tactics that I'm going to show you. And the reason you want to use a mage is um, because of the fight, the, because of the golem fight, the harvester fight. The way that I'm going to do it is going to be kiting it around, and kiting it is getting it to focus on one of your characters, and that character runs away, runs in a circle so that the golem never hits him, because the harvester does a lot of damage. Uh, I tried tanking it, and it is very, very difficult to just tank through his damage, because it, it, he just damages you a lot. Uh, you might survive, but eventually you're just, your party is going to wipe because of the damage outputs. So by kiting it, not only are you avoiding all of the damage, but you're also avoiding a lot of his mechanics. So now I'm going to show you one of the components of the fight, which I think is very important, is the preparation, the characters you have, and how to prep them, how to set them up for, for easy success. So like I said, first off, I'm using a mage as my main character, because mages in this case are very powerful. But he won't actually be doing that much stuff in uh, this fight. The mage in this fight is more of a healer than anything else. If you're going to be using a mage, I would suggest using a mage with a staff. I unfortunately did not have a staff, I, because I imported my character from Origins, or from Awakening, pardon me, and he had a two-handed sword because he was an arcane warrior battle mage combo, and uh, that's what he used. Except in this fight, it is kind of not that great because uh, of... Um, Actually, I did have a staff with me. I could have used that. Whoops. That's an oversight on my part. But yes, you're going to want to use uh, a staff if possible. Uh, because range, ranged attacks in this fight are, are very useful and they're very, very good for, uh, focusing the, the golem down as fast as you can, as well as controlling the adds. And that's why the mage is good here, because he has a lot of crowd control abilities like Crush and Prison, like Cone of Cold, uh, like Hand of Winter if you're, if you've taken Battle Mage, that kind of thing. But in this case, he's also going to be set up as a healer. So let's take a look at the tactics I have set up for the mage. And the two most important tactics right now are for him to use, for him or her if you're using a female character as well, um, is to have the tactic for the mage to use a Lyrian potion when their mana or stamina is below 25%. Because I had so many Lyrian potions, I, I very easily set up this, uh, this tactic without really worrying too much. I have about almost 60 potions, and that will last me for a very long time, so feel free to do that. The second tactic that is very important for the mage um, is to use regeneration on any ally that is below 50% health. Every other uh, tactic, I didn't actually slot in any tactics. You can put in whatever you want there, like uh, have your mage cast Crush in Prison or heal on it by itself or cast Life Ward on allies that are very low, that kind of thing. But I micromanage my mage a little bit myself. And of course, uh, you're going to want to make it a spirit healer that's very useful because he has a revival and that will save the fight if something goes horribly wrong it is kind of a way to um, catch up and make sure that things don't go horribly wrong because right now in your default party without any respecking the golem has a has a revival spell but in this case the golem if he goes down the fight's kind of over at that point so that's why i had my mage have a revival for sure 
The other thing that I feel is very important for the mage is to have force field to put on the golem if he's taking a lot of damage. That's how I saved him from dying a few times, is by putting the force field on the golem, as well as uh, lines in the creation tree. So the heal and the rejuvenate and the regeneration are all very useful, I would, f I would say, if you want to use that stuff. And a spirit healer, like I said. I took Arcane Warrior as well in Battle Mage because that's kind of the character that I played in Awakening and the character I played in in the Golems DLC. And, and Arcane Warriors and uh, Battle Mages are very tanky mages, which is useful. Um, so yes, once again, I'll say use the staff for ranged weapons. But uh, in, in that case, he's just going to be sitting in a corner healing. So let's take a look at Jarek, which in this case is... Probably the most important character that you're going to have because he is going to do pretty much all of the damage in this fight. Normally when you get him he is a dual wield rogue but you're going to want to respec him. This is probably the only character that is mandatory to respec for this fight and you're going to want to spec him as an archer. So let's take a look at what I spec him into. Uh, I give him pretty much all of the archery talents because I don't really know what I'm doing <laughs> with, with archery. I've never really played an archer yet. Um, but he is very, very powerful. The two main abilities that you're going to want is Arrow of Slaying, which is going to do a ton of damage, and Scatter Shot, which is very good for controlling the adds that come out. The, the, the arrow will bounce to all of the adds and stun them, which is vital, especially when you want to try and control all of the adds. And then all of the other talents to make his, uh, his abilities much better. And then uh, the other talents are kind of... Uh, Kind of irrelevant, really. I, I took Legionnaire Scout to make him more, uh, to make him stronger as well, more resilient to damage if he ever starts taking damage in the fight. And and for his tactics, I basically set up the default archery tactics with a lot of tactic slots for Jarek as well, because he is an archer. You're going to want to stack his dexterity as high as possible so that he does as much damage as possible, making the fight quicker and easier. And, uh, and basically I just left him to do his own thing, uh, but I f made him focus the, the Harvester. So you tell Jarek to only attack the Harvester and then use his scatter shot on, and then use his scatter shot on all of the adds that pop out. His Bronto, his pet Bronto, which he gets as a racial ability, is probably going to be the most important uh, character as, as well, because of, um, I use the Bronco as, as a kiter in this fight because the Bronco actually runs faster when he's in combat. He is probably the best kiter for this fight and he has a taunt which is very very useful which I'm going to use a lot during that fight. The big problem uh, with Jarek is that if he dies the Bronco disappears but the good thing about the Bronco is that if the Bronco dies he can just summon it back again. There is a cooldown on it though and uh, at one point during the fight the Bronco did die and that's when I freaked out a bit. That's why you have Brogan, which is going to be your off tank. The off tank's role is to pick up uh, the adds and control the adds and kill them so that they're not on the main tank. And in this case, the adds are going to be the skeletons. And they're pretty dangerous because they can hit very hard. They're very resilient, especially the red skeletons. And they also have a stun, which is the worst thing that can happen to your Bronto. If your Bronto gets stunned or if the or if the golem dies, this, the runic golem, then you then the fight's pretty much over, unless you can uh, revive the golem or uh, keep the fight up until the bronco gets revived. And so that's what Brogan does: is he's the off, off tank to kind of pick up the mess if something happens. He's a very good ad controller because he's got the pull, which pulls all of the ads to him. It's called Grievous Insult. He's also got Peon's Blight, which will kill any ad that is not elite in one hit. And that thing is amazing. Uh, for his tactics, I basically just left him as default tactics. He's actually, those tactics are actually just fine. And he does a very good job. And that's it. Uh, he's, he doesn't require any respec or anything. I just left him as default. For the Runic Golem, he's going to be interesting because uh, he is going to just sit in the middle and have Cleansing Aura up. For his tactics, I removed everything. Pretty much, you don't want him to do, uh, you don't want him to do you don't want him to do Quake and you don't want him to throw the rock because there's those are f those are friendly fire abilities and if they hit someone the friendly fire will knock them down or stun them and that's the last thing you want to have happen to your Bronto is to get them stunned uh, because the Bronto has to keep moving at all times basically so if he gets stunned he's dead and that's the worst thing that can happen so you want to turn off those tactics 
I, I gave him, uh, told him to use group heal if any allies below 50% health, and use chain lightning if there's any enemies as well as slam. You don't really need these last two. He's basically just there to be a support uh, golem in the fight. And that's about it. Now you're going to want to turn on hold position, and uh, now I'm going to show you the positioning. So this is basically the room. It's a semicircle, and the harvester is right there sleeping. Once you enter the semicircle, it will start the fight. There are a couple of important things in this room. This switch is the most important thing here. And you see how the screen is red. When you click the switch, the screen will turn normal colored. And that's a very important part of the fight. But first I'm going to talk about positioning, and then I'm going to talk about the switch. So I'm going to put my golem right here in the middle. This is so that to make it so that his cleansing aura covers basically a large area of the room. And, uh, and it's going to cover where the bront was going to run around. And the harvester is going to stick in the middle of the room as well. I'm going to stick my mage next to the switch over here, and Jarek on the other side of the switch. You want to put them near the switch so that they have uh, easy access to the switch so that they can click it at any time, but you don't want them to put them too close together in case the golem does an AoE at them and they both get hit. If, if someone's going to get hit, you only want one of them to get hit, and you're going to tell them to hold position there as well. For Brogan, I kind of just put him um, anywhere, kind of at the back over here, in, in between Jarek and uh, the Golem, so that he's out of range of getting hit from anything. And uh, he's going to be running around the arena as well, trying to pick up any of the skeletons that spawn. I call them adds, as you've heard. As for the Bronto, he's going to stick in the middle. He's going to try and stick inside the regeneration area of the Golem, and just run around in a circle. His taunt is valuable because it is going to draw the attention of the Harvester, which is what you want. You want the Harvester to be following the bron Bronto, and the Bronto will just run around in the circle, having the Harvester just follow him around. And you just repeat that over and over. You try and get the Harvester to just follow the Bronco around in a circle. Now there are going to be ads that spawn in this fight, which are the skeletons. And there is a little bit of luck factored into this fight, where some of the skeletons will be normal with a white name, some of them will be elite with a yellow name, and those ones are a little bit tougher, and they're pretty dangerous. And then sometimes, rarely, there's going to be a boss skeleton. Uh, it only happened to me once, and it was pretty scary. So there is, yeah, there is a, a bit of um, random number generation, and have some luck for them not to spawn, because if they spawn, then it's kind of tricky to deal with them. And these skeletons you want to try and have Brogan pick up and tank. Now the skeletons is where the switch comes into play. When the switch is triggered, it will kill all of the adds. So I try to keep the switch um, for as long as possible until I get starting to get overwhelmed with skeletons and then I press it. You will only have the switch available to you during phase one. But if a switch is up and it, and it transitions into phase two, the switch will still be up for phase two and you'll only get to use it once for phase two which is very useful and will pretty much make the fight a lot easier now how do you transition into phase two you might ask well once the golem the big flesh golem reaches zero health phase two will start once phase two starts the harvester will detach itself from the golem and will be a much more mobile enemy he'll just leap around the arena a lot he has an aura that will revive any of the skeletons that are still around. So it, at the start of phase two, if you still have a switch up, I highly suggest pressing it. It will clear all of the dead skeletons from the room, and then he won't have anything to revive. And it will make the fight a lot easier, a lot easier to manage, because there won't be as many adds to deal with. And at this point, I just used everyone to focus him down, and then try to use Brogan to... Uh, tank the skeletons and use the bronco to kite them if I ever needed to. And from that point on it was pretty easy. For the golem you're also going to want to have fire weapons on because it does additional fire damage and these guys are made of flesh which uh, I think they're vulnerable to it. You can also stack the uh, weapon enchants if if you want. On my mage I have telekinetic weapons up and it stacks with the fire weapons from the golem. Okay, that's pretty much the strategy I used for the Harvester. It made the fight a lot easier and more manageable. If you'd like to see it in action, you can click on the screen right now and it will take you to a video where I have uh, fought the Harvester. And you can just take a look at it uh, in real time. So, yes, that's how you do it. Thank you very much for watching and take care. Bye-bye.